Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good evening to our homeschoolers. Magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat. Hello, Gian. Wow! Number one present. Thank you, my love. Hi, Bea. How may Hi, Mary. Hello, hi, Ida. Hello, good evening. Magandang gabi sa kanilang lahat. Grabe, tunay nga pong excited po ako sa ating, um, sa ating session for today because... Um, Actually, this is our first time to be able to do this live na nasa ibang country po siya. And even though ibang time zone, at least one hour lang, no? She really took time to be with us. And I'm so grateful for this. Hi, Clara. Hi, Clarice. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tef from Baguio. Oh, Sarah. Takizawa from Japan. So, anong oras na dyan? 9 p.m., okay? Mga 9.01 siguro. Hi, Clarice. Hi, Santi. Homework from Dubai. Magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat. I think sa Dubai, magandang hapon. Hi, Janet. Hello, Janet. I remember you. Hopefully, na-download mo na ang e-book. Okay. Nakakatuwa lang, no, na uh, in this time, Hi, Hanilin. In this time talaga, God is uh, using this platform for us to be able to gather. And I've never in my wildest dream be able to interview my dear friend Avic here na nasa Japan siya at nandito ako sa Pilipinas. Grabe lang how God really orchestrate people's lives. Oh, dahil gusto na... Oh, hi, Rush! Hi, Crispian! Hello! Good evening from Dumaguete. Magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat. Well, I'm just gonna do a little housekeeping here. Um, Siyempre, lagi ko inire-remind. Okay, may mga contents po kami dito. May mga information po kaming... Um, Binibigay po sa inyo rito every time that we do live. Pero I just want to remind you po, this is not a permanent solution. We're just here to make, you know, to educate, to empower, and to encourage each and every one. But we are not here to tell you what to do. Okay? God has given each and every one of us the power of choice. So our prayer of na every content that we um, show to you here sa amin pong uh, iHomeschool FB Live, eh makatulong po sa inyo. And hopefully will ease, uh, makakatulong po sa inyong decision-making process. And not only that, um, uh, by God's grace, you'll be able to, you know, trust the process as well and enjoy making decisions with your family. Hello, June! Hi, Asahi! Hi, Apple! Hi, Jesse! Oh, my favorite content. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much sa lahat na encouragement with you guys. That's why, di ba, I, I posted siguro mga few days ago, um, Meron po ako dong parang poster na may yellow na nakaganon yung mukha ko, no? I just want to tell you, if you have, um, yan, this one. Thank you, Hazel, for showing it to me. If you have uh, other concerns or other issues in homeschooling that you think our platform can help, please post in the comment so that we'll be able to deliberate that and discuss so that we could be able to know rin po kung paano namin kayo matutulungan. Hi, Kay! Hi, Hi, Ati Ruth. Kamusta na po kayo? Hi, Trixie. Hi, Nimsi. Hi, JL Magpayo from Cebu. Oh, grabe. Nakakatuwa naman po. Hi, Kay. Okay. So, meron din po tayong frequently asked questions. Nakapin po yan lagi sa ating um, uh, page. Kasi I make sure, kaya nga I'm making all this content. Ilalagay po namin lahat. Lahat po ng ginagawa po namin dito ay lagi po namin nilalagay sa YouTube. At ito po yung mga frequently asked para po guided po kayo. You can share this as well. At ina-update po namin yan at least every week. Okay. Hi, Ethel. Hi, Wida. Wow, I'm really excited na talaga to introduce our friend. Kasi alam kong madami na po kayong prepared questions. So, without further ado, no, I just want to introduce to you my dear friend, Avic. Okay. Avic is in her mid-40s, a homeschooling nanay of a single child in Japan. Her daughter, Adana, is nine years old and has been homeschooling since she was born. So, nine years na po. She is in third grade and her husband is Pido. And Avic is uh, homeschooling her all year round. Okay. Siguro, hindi ko na lahat sasabihin, lahat ng detalye dito sa post ko. I just want to introduce to you my dear friend, Avic. Hello, Avic. Hi! Hello! 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 hello. Kamusta? I'm Am good! Thank you! 
Clear ba yung bosses ko ngayon dyan? Yes, it's clear. Very clear. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, maybe you can say hi to our viewers. Grabe, ang dami na. Ang dami Hello? na dito. Jasmine. Yeah. <laughs> Naku, Abik, thank you so much. I know that uh, madami kang ginagawa. But because of all the things na ginagawa mo, you could be able to share to you, uh, to us, no? To us. Kung anong mga tips nyo, tips mo para sa amin, okay? Kaya nga, um, itong title natin, di ba? How to homeschool, di ba? While working. So, I just want to start with that, with this, no? Maybe you can tell um, about yourself. Kung ano yung, siguro, uh, how can I say this? Para makilala ka nila in a deeper way. Okay, okay. so... Um, I have one daughter and dumating kami sa Japan in 2004. Um, at that time, hindi pa kami married ni Tido, who's my husband. And we started building our family here. And it's just us here, a family of three. So um, I'm working from home most days of the week. Like especially on weekdays, I would work about four to five hours a day. But I work a lot during the weekends and on holidays. So. I've been homeschooling Adana since she was born. And like most of us, um, nag-start kami mag-decide mag-homeschool because of a crisis. I know, Novi, I don't know if I mentioned this to you before na there was um, a big earthquake in 2011. That was the time that my daughter was born. And so na daycare, my slot's a daycare. Um, we kept the slot in the daycare for a very, very long time. Siguro mga three months din yun na binabayaran namin. Was I, while I was praying whether we would just homeschool. And then, you know, after, to, to put a long story short, we decided to homeschool. And um, here we are still homeschooling and working from home and juggling both. Later, you could be able to ex uh, no, no, explain more of that experience. Yung, di ba, nung buntis ka pa kay Adana, grabe, kinakwento mo nga sa akin yun eh. But uh, I just want no, to know, no? Na, because homeschooling is really a job in itself, isn't it? And you working as a mom is a, another job to battle on. So how do you gauge that? And siguro, um, bago mo answer rin yun, I think, importante muna, why? I have to ask your why. Why did you choose to homeschool? Okay, I have no fancy answer to that. Every time I'm asked that, kasi parang I, I was raised by a working mom. So parang, Okay, working mom, tapos lumaking may yaya, kahit na hindi na namin binabayaran si yaya, nag-stay pa rin si yaya, so talagang hanggang lumaki ako may yaya, and um, nag-stop mag-work si mama. So in my mind, when I got married, tapos nag-decide kami to, to start a family, talagang mag-work ako. I mean, work in terms of going to full-time full -time job, tapos maka-daycare or regular school yung anak ko. It never really occurred to me na I would homeschool. And then... Nung pinanganak si Adana, to, to give a context, no, yun yung big earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And every day, maraming aftershocks. I thought I was gonna die. Peter was not able to come home. And then that was around the time that I gave birth. So not only was there a threat of tsunami and earthquake, meron pang threat ng nuclear radiation. And so when I gave birth to her, nagkaroon ako ng leave for a year. Kasi dito may bayad yung ano eh. Pag naka-leave ko for a year, may bayad ka ng... Kung baga sumisweldo ka pa rin for one year to one and a half years. So ini-enjoy ko yon, di ba? And then finally, we had to decide to bring her to a daycare. And nung dinala ko siya sa daycare for three days, no? Talagang umiiyak ako. I was missing her. And then I went home one time. Kasama ko yung anak ko. Pareho kaming mugto ang mata. Umiiyak yung anak ko na... Nag-spend ng time sa daycare, one year old, umiiyak, and then ako umiiyak din. And then I told Pito, is it okay if I pray about, you know, giving up my full-time work and just, you know, stay home and probably in the future, work from home. So doon nagsimula siya na parang hindi ko pinlano to homeschool. But because of a crisis na parang every time may aftershock, sinasabihan kami nung daycare staff kapag ka, May aftershock or pag may malakas na earthquake ulit, ganito yung gagawin mo, dito ka maglalakad, ganito yung gagawin, dito namin itatago yung anak mo, dito mo siya ipipick up. And then because of that reality and because of that context, no, no, nagkaroon ako ng ibang sense of 
how important life is. Parang even yung every moment that you get to spend time with your loved ones, nag-iba talaga ng pagtingin. And so I was able to really consider. And I prayed, I, I asked for counsel, I read books. Kasi hindi masyadong marami nag-homeschool sa Japan. Sobrang konting nag-homeschool dito. In fact, um, frowned upon yung nag-homeschool dito. Especially during that time, that was what, nine years ago. And so we decided to pull her out from daycare. Um, and we made a lot of difficult decisions in order to accommodate that. So ganun siya nagsimula. So my answer is that I wanted to spend time with her. But I really wanted to make every moment count. Wow, that's amazing. So how did how did Pido responded to that? No, well, you know I mean that's nice. Right? Right. You know Pido, right? But um, he's always the type of person na he will always support my choices. But at the time, pinagpray ko talaga no. Sabi ko I don't want it to be imposed on him. Because lumaki ako no, na kakakita ko na homeschooling family eh. like. You know, the, the people in church, minsan nag, pag gusto mag-date nung mag-asawa, nag-volunteer kami, kami yung nag-aalaga nung, di ba, pag, nung single pa, di ba? Tapos gusto mo mag-get together, tapos magluluto sila ng marami, tapos pupunta ka sa bahay, aalagaan mo lang yung anak nila. And so, nakita ko yun, parang na-expose ako to homeschooling families. And nakita ko na it's not bad to homeschool. In fact, ang gaganda ng results. Tuwan-tuwa ako dun sa behavior ng mga bata, Pido naman, on the other hand, has never been exposed to homeschooling. So parang, tapos pareho kami, as you know, parang academically motivated, di ba? High school, laging may recognition sa school. So napaka-importante sa amin yung school. The reason why we came to Japan was because we got a scholarship, that's a school. So when I told him about it, sabi niya, pray about it. I think, I think gusto ni Pido na mag-decide ako, not because nami-miss ko yung anak ko, but because it was the That's direction good. that I was telling me to go into. Kahit yung crisis pa, kasi I was telling, paano ko may earthquake, blah, blah, blah. And then sabi niya, no, pray about it because, you know, it's better that we hear God now and really make the decision later on. Every de- de- decision that we will do later on will be a lot easier as long as may peace ka sa heart mo. So doon nagsimula yun, pero two months ako nag-pray, no, no. <laughs> nagbabayad siya ng daycare kasi ang mahal ng daycare. So pag pinul out mo yung slot niya sa daycare, mawawala na siya ng daycare. So mahihirapan ako. Very competitive sa Tokyo, right? So nagbabayad siya ng daycare. Every month pumupunta kami na we will try to go. We will, we will, we're still, di naman namin masabing we're praying about it pa, di ba? Sabi namin we're still considering a lot of things, ganyan. And then finally, after siguro two and a half months, I decided, no, let's do this. Tapos siya rin, nagkaroon na rin siya ng peace. So that's how it started. That's good, that's good. Kasi importante yun eh. Siyempre, you're in a foreign, I mean, foreign country, and standing to do homeschooling is not an easy decision to make. Siyempre kasi, kumbaga nag adjust pa ka kayo sa atmosphere, sa environment, tapos mag adjust kayo with the newborn baby and how to teach your child at home. But, okay, my question is, because I know time management is really a, a big question mark in doing homeschooling. And homeschooling has its own, you know, challenging, uh, kumbaga, challenging ways to do it in a daily basis. How is it in a typical day for you? Yeah, this is what I, I don't have a typical day. That's okay. the, when you're working from home, okay? Um, siguro this is something I learned earlier on. I do not stick with schedule. Kasi na-realize ko, that schedule kasi is some, di ba parang, when you read a lot of books about homeschooling, tapos um, makikita mo what's a typical day for another family, it gives me a lot of insecurity because it doesn't work for me and my family. Wala kaming yaya, wala kaming helper, um, walang driver. Tapos everything you have to do on your own and People in Japan, they work long hours. Nagkataon lang na Pido works for a company na medyo family-friendly, but still, madala siyang mag-business trip. So sometimes it's just me, right? And Adana. Um, I, I tried following a schedule. Yung parang, okay, mag-work ako um, gantong oras. Tapos, uh, mag- mag- mag-homeschool ako dapat before lunch, tapos na ako. What I realized, though, is that mas nag-work sa akin yung routine. 
Ibig sabihin, okay sa akin na medyo flexible yung schedule. Pero meron kami mga activities na dapat ginagawa every day without even writing them down. So there's a difference between schedule and a routine. So ako more on the routine type. Ibig sabihin, ang mga routine namin kailangan, di ba kailangan nagde-devotion, nagre-read ng Bible. And there are times na kapag may sakit si Adana, syempre wala naman akong helper. Ako talaga yung gising, nag- nagtrabaho ka, gising ka through the night. Hindi ka naman makakapag-devotion ng 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in a room, in an air-conditioned room without any noise. So kung mangyari, 6 o'clock, papasok na yung asawa mo, magagawa, may, may bento, kailang, although ginagawa ko yung bento niya sa gabi. So ginagawa ko yung bento niya. Bento is lunchbox, di ba? So, gusto ko siya kumain ng healthy. So most moms, ginagawa in the morning. Mga Japanese moms, hindi ko kaya yun. Tsaka yung mga cute na bentos, hindi ko na kaya yun. So ginagawa ko na siya sa gabi para sa umaga, kukunin na lang niya sa fridge, tapos yun na yung lunch niya. And then, we just follow our day. Tapos, um, we just do certain things every day. Meron kaming mga routine. For example, kailangan um, we eat together. May mga times na we don't eat together and that's okay. Parang hindi ako masyadong strict in terms of dapat. Lagi tayong mag- magkasabay kumain because sometimes I have meetings early in the morning. There was a time before may meeting kami sa New York. So parang alas stress ng umaga, nag, nag, nag-meeting ako kasi yun yung available time nung kausap namin sa New York. And he, therefore, hindi, hindi ako makakakain ng breakfast with her at 7 o'clock. So, ang nangyayari, meron kaming routine activities. Ito yung mga expectations namin every day. And because of that, nag-develop kay Adana yung independence. Lalo na yung mga Japanese dito, 6 years old, no, naglalakad na mag-isa, going to school. Mga six years old, nakikita mo naglalakad with another um, another group, parang tatlo sila or apat sila, maglalakad sila for 30 minutes in the rain, in the snow, during sunny weather. So, kumbaga maagang nade-develop yung independence. So, kay Adana, maaga siyang natuto na tumayo, prepare to prepare her breakfast, alam niya na how to drink water, alam niya na how to take her vitamins, alam din niya na, you know, kapag napupuyat ako because meron akong late night meeting, alam niyo kung yung rice cooker namin, nilagay namin sa place na kaya niyang abutin. So meron lag, may rice na dun palagi. Okay? So high tech naman yung rice cooker nila dito. Hindi, hindi kumbaga, may mga time na parang, basta okay yung rice cooker nila. Kahit matagal yung rice dun, masarap pa rin. So nakukuha niya lahat yun. So I guess, yun yung typical day namin. May play every day. Minsan yung play namin in the morning kasi may meeting ako ng lunch. Minsan naman ang play namin nangyayari at 4 o'clock kasi puno yung morning ko. So yung play namin 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. So instead of following a very tight schedule na ikakastress ko, okay, um, tapos alam kong hindi ko, realistically hindi ko follow nag-agree kami as a family ano yung mga non-negotiables, ano yung mga dapat ginagawa namin every day. At ano yung pwede namin hindi gawin for that day na pwede namin i-push to another day. So yun yung typical day. Wala talagang typical day. Ang galing, no? Ang galing. Kasi very realistic yung ano mo eh. You, you choose your battle. I just want to share this, no? That what I've learned in scheduling. Even it maybe work also for non-working moms or working moms. Correct me lang if you want to add here, Abig. So I keep three lists of three, eh. Like the first is list that has three things you will do today. Kasi the goal is productivity. You don't, you don't, you have to accept na hindi mo man talaga magagawa lahat in a day. So at least three things that I will be able to do today. The second is three things you'd like to get done. But hindi masyadong essential, pero alam mong pwedeng gawin. And then the third is three things that need to be done at some point. So, don't be too hard to yourself, no, moms. I'm, I'm really encouraged with Avic, no? You have to take it one day at the time. It's not working, moms. I grab it. I really salute ako. I cannot do that, no? I really can't do that. But siguro to ease your ano lang, dilemma. Kasi yung laging question sa akin, Avic, paano ba? What is a typical day for a working parent? Ganyan, ganyan. And I'm glad that you said that there's nothing. Because do what works for you. Okay, maybe itong mga tips na sinabi ko or sinabi ni Abik will be able to help you, guys. So take note on that end. Kasi at the end of the day, kailangan lang natin ni-embrace na 
hindi kaya hindi talaga natin magagawa lahat. Okay, don't push yourself and force yourself na kailangan magawa. And I love that. Okay, because of that, ano, what you shared about time management. And ang galing lang, kasi lahat ng mga parents, naku, baka nga it's not enough. Baka nga, hindi ko natuturo yung dapat. Kasi nga ganun, yung parang with that kind of schedule. It, does a method works for you? Like a homeschool method? And if you have, can you share that with us? Okay. Ganito, when I started homeschooling, and this is siguro an encouragement to many of your viewers, no? Um, and dami kasing noise, not just about homeschooling, but about parenting, right? So, and daming how to raise your child well, maraming approaches, and all of these are actually very well-meaning and very good. Pero when I started homeschooling, del because na, nung nagkaroon ako ng peace, okay, Lord, gusto ko mag-homeschool. And I was talking to my husband, gusto ko mag-homeschool. But where do I start? Laging ganun ang tanong. Where do I start? Where do I begin? And then, sa kakabasa ko, dahil medyo nerd, medyo nerd, mahilig magbasa, dahil wala namang malaking homeschooling community dito, na-realize ko na the first thing na ginawa ko pala nung time na yun was to research ano yung mga mistakes ng mga homeschoolers dati na sana hindi nila ginawa. So, binasa ko yun. Sin binasa ko siya because I thought, you know, I can learn from their experiences and probably um, from what they, from, from, from their heart na nakita na nila yung mga anak nila, they turned out okay, they turned out um, successful din naman. Probably yung mga fears na meron sila about the curriculum, about the schedule, about... Um, socialization, probably, um, hindi naman pala siya ganun kalaki. Legitimate fears, pero hindi naman pala siya ganun kalaki. And so, what I did, binasa ko yung book na Unhurried Homeschooling. Isa talaga siya sa nagkaroon ng impact sa akin. Um, parang yung, basically, yung, yung premise ng book is that you don't want to, to, ano, to, to, be on, to be in a rush when you're homeschooling. Tapos nagkataon, while I was reading that book, Nov, about uh, unhurried homeschooling, naalala ko, when, in my, when I was in my 20s, nagpunta ko ng, ano, ng, ng Denmark for a business trip. And part, part of that trip, nagkaroon kami ng parang exchange program, parang umatan kami ng meeting, then after that, nagstay kami sa isang town. Tapos sa nagkataon, ang napili ko na program was to interview different schools in Denmark. Okay? So nagpunta ko sa iba't ibang mga schools, mga kindergarten, young learners, one thing that really struck me dun sa na-observe ko sa Denmark was the kids were playing all the time. As in, three, year old, three years old, four years old, nagpi-play, umaakit ng puno, nag, nagpi-prepare ng lunch, gumagamit ng real knives. Tapos sabi ko dun sa principal, nasan yung studying? Nasan yung school? Tapos sabi niya, this is school. This is what we do. Parang we play, they learn life skills, and then they just, you know, help people. They mix with older people. They mix with younger people. And they play a lot. Bihirang-bihira ako silang nakita. Kasi nag-observe ako eh. Parang for a week, umikot ako ng mga schools. And then, nagkaroon pala siya ng impact sa akin when I was reading The Unhurried Homeschooling na, ah, ito yung style na gusto ko. Um, because, and, and there is a study to this, ah, yung mga, mga Scandinavian students actually ang tataas ng scores sa SAT, sa mga, mga exams. Matataas yung scores nila and nag-excel sila in um, academics. And then, late sila nagsistart nung talagang actual schooling, yung parang textbooks, mga seven years old na sila nagsistart. That actually resonated sa akin. And then, I thought, okay, this will be my methodology. This will be my approach. There are so many approaches, and dami dami, and I don't want to buy all the books agad, kasi ang mahal, especially when I buy from America, papun ipapaship ko pa sa Japan, dahil wala namang nagdi-distribute talaga dito masyado sa Japan. Um, then that's when I decided I'll follow the, ano, parang in a way, unhurried homeschooling. So every day nagpi-play kami, um, I, 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 I let her do a lot of unstructured play, Pag sinabing unstructured, yung hindi nakikialam yung adults. Tapos nagbasa rin ako about boredom. Na, kasi ang takot ko, isa lang ang anak ko, dapat ba naglalaro ako palagi kasama niya? I'm on the floor, like siyang kinakausap. And then there was this mommy na, I think she's Canadian. Sabi niya sa akin, you know the best 
thing that you can teach your daughter is to is to flourish even in the midst of boredom. Because sabi ko talaga, eh, very successful yung mga anak niya, very very nice, very articulate. Sabi niya, you know, boredom is actually the birthplace of innovation and creativity. So because I I took that advice very seriously. Hindi ako nagigilty na yung anak ko naglalaro mag-isa or pupunta kami sa sand, may mga sand pit dito, tapos maglalaro siya ng sand, magro-roleplay siya. That's why even now, masusurprise ka kay Adana, even long train ride will never ask for a phone to play. Well, kaya niyang i-entertain yung sarili niya by looking out the window of the train. Four years old, nag-hiking siya, nakaakit yan on top of the mountain. Ang funny don't know, in the middle of the hike, sabi ko, I'm so tired, I don't want to go anymore. Sabi niya, nanay, don't give up, you can do it. Kasi habang nag-hiking kami, nakikinig siya ng birds, tinitignan yung shape ng mga, ng mga leaves. Doon ko na-realize na boredom was actually very good for her. So, naging approach ko in the early years was really to just play. Magugulat kayo. I did not teach phonics. I did not buy any fancy toys. I did not read. Um, I did not even teach her how to read. What I did, there was also a study. Sana, ewan ko kung maniniwala kayo, surrounding your kids with books actually has a very good impact on the literacy of the child or yung reading comprehension niya. Kasi may study na ginawa na finalo yung mga children that um, na surrounded ng books sa bahay. And that's what I did. So, bili ako ng bili ng books. Actually, mga second-hand books lang ang binibili ko kasi ang mahal ng English books dito. So, pag may na- nakikita ko magandang books, bili. Tapos, nasa living room, nasa bedroom. And then, nagulat ako at age three years old. Natutu- nagbasa. Hindi ko tinuturuan ng phonics. Hindi ko, t- hindi ko binila. Walang flashcards. Nagbasa. And doon ko na-realize na I think kailangan ko talagang i-trust yung, yung puso ng isang nanay. Kasi, kasi pag masyado kang maraming naririnig na noise, marami kang naririnig na dapat ganito yung gawin mo, dapat ang ganito yung gawin mo, to tell you the truth, you will be overwhelmed. And kapag na-overwhelm ka, doon na magsisimula yung fear. Kapag nagkaroon ka ng fear, doon na mabubuksan yung door for insecurity. Medyo dudungaw ka na doon sa kabilang family na, uy, bakit gano'n? Nagmumultiplication na. Yung anak ko hanggang ngayon, ito pa lang yung alam. You know, I stopped doing that. Even with good friends. I have a lot of good friends na advance yung mga anak. I stopped asking, ano nang ginagawa ng anak mo? I never did that. Sabi ko, um, this is something that I really, I read, I'm re- pero may piece ako na, I let her play for until siguro mga five, six years old. So six years old, dun, ko lang, dun lang ako nagsimulang bumili ng textbooks. Pero before that, parks, play, um, play every day. Um, tapos bumili lang ako ng mga books. Tapos I would read aloud to her without forcing her to really read. So naging ganun lang, naging relax yung environment. And I guess because relax yung environment, yung anak ko nagkaroon talaga ng genuine love for learning. Hindi siya, I, I guess it's too early to say she's only nine. And I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be in a place na magsabi, ang galing-galing ko or gayahin yung ginagawa ko. I think sa, sa tingin ko lang dun sa naging experience ko, hindi naging traumatic yung, yung, yung learning experience niya. Kasi nga, naging, naging kalmado yung nanay. Okay? Kailangan kalmado yung nanay. Kasi pag hindi kalmado yung nanay, mapapasa mo yun sa anak mo, di ba? So, yun. Oo, oh, di ba? Pag exhausted ka, exhausted and tired and, you know, maybe you try to compare yourself with other people, which is not good. That's why I like this platform, no? Like what you're saying here. We are encouraging you not to ever, ever compare yourself, even to us, that we are teaching you right now. Kasi ang maganda lang sa journey mo while I, I'm listening, um, you you also address na you have doubts and fears within yourself as well. Pero you didn't meditate on that. Eh. Kung baga, nakita mo yung in a words view na kung titingnan mo negative yung boredom, di ba? Negative siya. Yung parang, ha? Huh? Yung parang, ha? Huh? I'm bored. And then, ang tendency nga ng mga ng magulang is to 
give gadgets or things. Pero yun nga eh. That's what we need. We need to teach our kids to teach themselves because definitely God has given them God-ordained brains and, you know, the capability to learn within what they have and within their means. And kung ano lang po yun, yung kumbaga honoring their pace, di ba? Yun nga eh, nakakatuwa kasi it's really gentle on how you do it to Adana. And I'm so, nako, Adana is so blessed to have you, my dear. Nakakatuwa, nakakatuwa yung journey mo. Actually, um, similar to what you've said, yung meron ako ritong guest about unschooling eh. And then you said here na, nagsha-Charlotte Mason ka, but you also mix more of the time na ano ka, no? Unschooling ka. But nakakatuwa lang din kasi you can say that you are mixed match of everything. Why? So ang tawag sa'yo is more of eclectic. Na no. yung bang kind of... Ano? Kasi yung tawag. Oo, oh, kasi... <laughs> Oo, kasi you just do in a daily basis what works for you. Pag, kung baga, wala kang parang a grand scream of a plan na ito yun, di ba? Kasi parang yun lagi yung iniisip nila eh, para mag, maging work or they can define us uh, to be a successful homeschool, alam mo yun, or we could, you could be able to validate what year that you taught Adana or your child. So, nakakatuwa lang kasi um, if you're gonna make an advice, no, to, kasi, how do you gauge their progressing or Adana is progressing in that way? How do you gauge that because of that kind of uh, choice that you make? Okay, so ganito, before I tell you how I gauge yung progress ng anak ko, because dapat meron, imposible wala, okay? Um, hindi pwedeng wala. Siguro before I forget lang, um, an encouragement an encouragement lang to um, first time homeschoolers no or even nag homeschool ka na pero medyo na overwhelmed ka do not fall in love with any system or approach or curriculum because they will change fall in love with the idea of discovering how your child learns kasi more than anybody in the world ikaw yung nanay tsaka yung tatay when you choose to be present in the lives of your children Ikaw yung makakaramdam sa puso mo that, you know, my daughter does not respond positively to this approach. And minsan, dahil nabili mo na lahat ng curriculum, na ang dami mo nang nabasa dun tungkol sa isang curriculum, and minahal mo na siya, nag-fall in love ka na, it's very hard for you to unlearn. So ang mangyayari, na, nai-impose mo siya sa anak mo. So especially when you're starting or when you're transitioning from regular school to homeschool, a homeschooling approach, Try to do first things first. Um, I understand and daming magagaling na curriculum and lahat naman sa kanila, mababasa mo yung mga reviews, but try to fall in love more with the idea that, hang on, this is, this is a spot in my life. Give yourself the permission to enter through a season. Ibig sabihin na para, okay, this is a season. I'm giving myself the permission to not know what to do yet. Actually, yun yung nangyari sa akin, Nove. I'm giving myself the permission to not worry about the grades yet or not worry about the right or the perfect curriculum just yet. I'm giving myself the permission to just sit down and really, really check kung paano nagre-respond ang anak ko, sa paano siya natututo. Mas ano ba siya? Mas gusto niya ba ng storytelling? Mas gusto niya bang outdoors? And then... As I try to be a learner of my child, dun ko unti-unting aaralin what works for her. Because, you know, I should say this, no, Nov, um, there's a lot of talk about the benefits of homeschooling to a child. Okay? Palaging, you homeschool because this is good for the child, because my bullying sa school, which is um, happening in Japan, and daming bullying sa Japan, dahil mas, Mas makukustomize mo, you can focus on the character, and I'm all for that, okay? Those are good reasons, and do, those are good things. But there's something missing in that equation, and that is homeschooling is a calling that is not only for your child. It is a calling also for the parents. If you're homeschooling and you're feeling small, feeling overwhelmed, feeling insecure, and beating yourself up, feeling like a failure each time, and you're not flourishing, then you are not successful in your homeschooling journey, even if mataas yung grades ng anak mo, right? So what I'm saying is that, you know, when you're working and homeschooling, um, God is also, 
like in my case, no, because I'm a Christian, so ang background ko will be actually faith-based. I, I try to remind myself, and my husband, Pido, always tells me this. In this journey, lalo na pag nagkakamali ako sa homeschooling or nagbe-meltdown or na-overwhelm, napapagod, God is also fathering me. God also wants the parents to flourish. God also wants the parents to um, to find meaning and purpose and to, to find joy in homeschooling. And so kapag yung curriculum or yung approach na ginagamit mo, when pressed against the reality of, do you, do you really flourish as a parent? Baka hindi na then probably it's time to probably reconsider the approach and don't hang on to that. So do not fall in love with any approach na nag-work sa iba because it might not work for you. Now, the question of na paano mo ginigage, okay? Now, there are, in the beginning, wala kaming grades, okay? Wala kaming grades. Yung Christian Academy of Japan, um, it's a school in, in Tokyo, pero meron silang homeschooling department. So they... Um, they allow us to use any curriculum. Um, they give us advice, a lot of advice. And then may mga activities sila sa school, my arts, my, my sports fest, may mga speech fest na uma-attend yung mga homeschoolers. So may ganun kaming classing connection. However, walang grades, di ba? So ang nangyari was meron kaming yearly exam. Okay? Pero yung yearly exam na yon, in-advise ako pag second grade na. So second grade, meron kaming exam na tinitake. Um, tapos, yung result ng exam na yun, hindi siya grade, hindi siya parang perfect or 98. It's a description of the strengths and areas to improve ng anak mo. So basically, yun yung naging guide ko. Whether okay ba yung anak ko or hindi. And pangalawa, tumitingin din ako, nagre-research ako on, on my own, ano ang dapat alam ng isang first grader. Kaya lang, depende rin sa tinitignan mo. Um, to be honest, mas biased ako, mas tinitignan ko yung standard ng medyo Scandinavian, ano, medyo European yung tinitignan ko kasi yung American style, tsaka yung pinafollows, although ano ha, yung homeschooler provi- homeschooling provider ko nasa States, yung Home Life Academy nasa States, tapos Christian Academy of Japan, medyo American yung tendency niya, kaya lang sila, medyo maaga sila. So, Gusto ko i-follow yung Europe na medyo late, late nagsa-start, pero may focus on life skills, independence, um, so dun ko tinitignan ano ba yung dapat alam ng anak ko in terms of mathematics. And another gauge para sa akin, bumibula ko ng textbooks. Al- kasi nag Charlotte Mason ako. Ang Charlotte Mason kasi, um, I don't want to pretend like I'm an expert, pero we love living books, di ba? So yung mga living books, doon, doon umiikot yung pag-aaral nyo, right? So I follow Charlotte Mason. I love Charlotte Mason. It's my ultimate guide. Pero... I'm just being realistic. I'm working. May mga times, may meeting ako, two hours, three hours, minsan four hours. So, pumibila ako ng textbook and I would buy Kumon kasi Kumon Japanese, di ba? So, grade two, grade three. So, dahil, dahil ginagawa niyo yung textbooks, alam ko na, uy, kahit pa paano, nakakasabay siya doon sa level ng mga peers niya sa regular school. So, some homeschoolers kasi I know, ayo talaga ng textbooks. And I respect that. Kaya lang ako, I'm working from home. I have to be realistic. Hindi ko kaya to be always doing nature walk. I love nature walk kasi part ng Charlotte Mason, mag-nature walk ka, you observe mo, you drawing mo. Ang nature walk ko, medyo ibang klase. Parang hiking, papuntang supermarket. Okay, supermarket tayo, pero dadaan tayo sa medyo mapupunong lugar. Mag- mag-observe siya ng mga mushroom, ng mga birds for let's say, 30 minutes or 40 minutes, tapos punta na kami ng supermarket kasi wala akong helper. So ako rin ang mamamalengke, ako rin ang magluluto, ako rin ang maghuhugas with the help of my husband. So kailangan, medyo baguhin ko ng konti yung Charlotte Mason. Medyo, i- hindi naman baguhin, but i-adapt ko siya dun sa re- 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 realis- realistic ano ko, goals ko. So meron akong textbook. Kapag na- nakaya niyang gawin yung textbook for second grade, ibig sabihin, Naabot niya siguro yung yung skills ng second grade. Tapos may ano kami, may yearly examination kami. I don't know if that answered. Ang haba ng sinabi ko, no, sorry. Ang galing. Ganda nga eh. Naku, ang ganda. Abig, it's beyond the assessment what you have said here. And it's it's really, it's also the assessment of the heart. Of the heart of, naku, siguro may season ako in my 15 years of homeschooling, Abig. There was a season that I was in love with the method. 
And it's crazy. You know, because you have the tendency to 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 always inject and force that to your child. And it's not like that, you know. Nakakatawa lang kasi ang your journey on uh it's very very realistic of what you said. And I just want to ask no, kasi kanina sinabi mo na yung mga home life. Bakit dalawa yung ano mo accreditation mo? Why did you choose that? This is the practical okay. side. Oh, sige, ganito. To be honest, hindi nila alam na dalawa. <laughs> Oo, oh, <laughs> dalawa eh. Pareho <laughs> tayo. Pareho tayo. Pareho okay. tayo. Dalawa. For the longest time, naghahanap ako kung saan homeschooling provider kasi ayoko maging independent. Um, for reasons, no? Parang independent ako nung young, yung young learners pa lang siya, yung parang four years old, hindi talaga ako. Oh, alam mo, Novia, na just for your information tsaka ng viewers mo, libre ang school dito. Pati, pati um, kindergarten or uh, preschool, konting-konti lang yung babayaran mo. Kasi kahit private school, sinasubsidize na ngayon ng government. So, kumbaga, people are really asking, bakit ka nag-homeschool? Eh, libre, di ba? Parang ganun. So, actually, number one, dalawa, kasi... Yung government ng Japan, there was a time, tinatawagan kami na, kasi yung mga bata rito, bago pumasok sa school, kailangan may health check. Kasi yung Novian, meron silang ano dito, allowance. Pag pinanganak ang bata rito, every month may allowance ang bata. So ngayon, kapag hindi nagsuschool yung anak mo, nagre-regular school, tapos hindi nag-health check before ng regular school, kasi may health check naman siya, pero yung may parang ng health check siya, bago pumasok sa school, hindi ko napuntahan yon So ang nangyari, magtataka sila baka na-abuse yung bata kasi hindi hindi nga nila alam yung homeschooling, di ba? So tinatawagan kami, talagang ilang beses kaming tinatawagan. Buti na lang, registered kami sa Christian Academy of Japan. Kasi ang maganda doon, meron pangalan Japan, Christian Academy of Japan. So kapag ka tinanong, oh, but hindi nagre-regular school yung anak mo, ang sasabihin, eh naka sa school, sa Tokyo, Christian Academy of Japan. Tapos meron akong letter na nagsasabing, registered ako. So that's one reason kung bakit ako registered dun sa Christian Academy of Japan. Tsaka, meron silang actual na school. So parang if in the future, isipin namin, magsuschool siya hanggang high school, madali namin siyang ipasok into a regular school. Kasi hindi naman ako nag-iisip no via na, uy, yung homeschool ko yung anak ko hanggang high school. Hindi ako ganun. Every year, dinideside namin yon umuupo kami with Adana, tinatanong namin siya, Um, would you want to consider ano, regular school? Tapos even yung bahay na pinili namin, kasi we bought a place dito sa Japan, yung bahay na pinili namin, surrounded by schools, okay? Talagang naninigurado kasi ako, kasi baka at some point, gusto kong mag-work full-time na lang at irregular school siya. Tapos yung anak ko, gusto rin mag-regular school, okay din naman. Parang, this is the point here, no? I'm not, when you're homeschooling, you, you should not have the attitude of looking down on people who go to regular school and vice versa. Parang yun yung parang naging attitude ng heart ko because when when you have that attitude, nag-a-add siya ng pressure on your part. Di ba? Parang, parang kailangan may patunayan ka kasi homeschool yung anak ko, dapat magaling yung anak ko, dapat hindi nahuhuli kasi yun yung homeschool ko na nga, natututukan ko na nga. So ang ginawa ko, tinanggal ko yun. I don't want to have any value judgment on people who go to regular school or nag-homeschool for a season tapos nag-decide pumunta sa regular school or ipupull out mo sa regular school ulit tapos nag-homeschool ka ulit because, you know, every family has unique um, seasons and you just have to honor that. So, yung isa naman, yung Home Life Academy, kaya naman ako nag-register nag doon, okay? Kasi may grades. Doon naman nagsimula na sabi ko, nako, pag, pag nagtuloy-tuloy yung homeschooling ko, na gusto ko siyang mag-homeschool all the way to high school, gusto ko meron akong grades. Although I keep a portfolio, may grades yung um, Home Life Academy na parang later on, pwede mong ipakita. So kung mag-aaral man siya sa, I don't know, kung mag-aaral man siya sa Philippines o mag-aaral siya sa Japan ng, ng college or gusto niya mag-aaral sa ibang bansa aside from Japan, meron akong mapapakita na meron akong ebidensya, di ba? Meron akong record. Tapos, Since um, may discount kami, kasi yung, yung Christian Academy of Japan, kapag missionary family ka, 50% ka. Tapos you can borrow all the books from their library. So I don't have to buy. Kung baga sabi ko nga, Novi, when I decided to homeschool, hindi ko alam that God would provide me in this way. Parang ang alam ko lang, Lord, 
may crisis, may earthquake, um, um, mas mura mag-school, pero ito yung leading mo, ito yung, ito yung heart ko ngayon. I didn't know at that time that, that God was gonna provide na parang um, yung, yung CAJ pala meron siyang library na online lang or itatawag mo lang, isi-send nila sa bahay mo lahat ng books. Imagine that, no, Vian, I don't have to buy sunlight books. Ang mahal-mahal nun. Ipapadeliver nila isang malaking box. Tapos, kapag isusoli mo na, um, idadadali mo lang siya sa post office or you can ask somebody to come to your house to pick up the box tapos i-deliver nila sa school. I don't even have to go out of the house. So, parang naging posible siya for us na nabawasan yung gastos ko sa book, sa curriculum. And at the same time, naging part kami ng isang community sa Japan. Kasi I'll never know, baka dito mag-settle si Adana. So gusto kong meron siyang um, school sa Japan. Tapos eventually, kapag nag-settle naman siya abroad, right? Halimbawa, makapangasawa siya ng taga-ibang bansa. Ayoko pang isipin yun, Novi. Pwede siyang mag-masters or mag-doctoral anywhere. So ganun na yung ginawa ko. Hindi ko sinasabing dapat dalawa. Pero mura kasi siya. <laughs> Mura siya. Oh. Mura. I agree. Actually, pareho tayo ng foreign provider. We're the same. We're in the same. And I have a local provider here in the Philippines. Ako naman yung, um, yung reason ko is if either my kids decided to be abroad or here, at least meron silang prepared grades on that end. Okay, moving on. Kasi you said the word community. So do you have a certain community that you are in, like co-op, that you can... Um, you know, let Adana join as well, or you have other parents like group of homeschoolers that you join. Okay, this is ano, hopefully may ma-encourage kang mga viewers, okay? Kasi akala ng iba, magpa-flourish ka lang as a homeschooling family if you hang out with other homeschooling families all the time, okay? Yun yung initial na reaction, yung, yung initial thought ko before, eh. parang Lord, paano yun? Nasa Japan ako, Ilan lang kaming homeschoolers, no, Vian? Tapos scattered pa kami all over the country. Tapos, when I decided na makipag-play date, ang gastos. Kasi, <laughs> kasi taga, taga kabilang prefecture yung, yung, yung ka-hangout ko. Tapos, syempre, mag-train all day, mag-lunch, blah, blah, blah. Tapos, bago nasundan, hindi mo siya nasundan. And sabi ko, Lord, sabi ko talaga kay Lord, umiyak ako. Sabi ko, paano kami magpa-flourish na ang lalayo ng mga homeschooling families. Tapos, syempre, iba't ibang kultura pa. Um, you're so blessed in the Philippines kahit pa paano. Alam mo, puro Filipinos kayo. Pare-pareho kayo ng humor, pare-pareho kayo ng kinakain, pareho kayo ng trip sa buhay. Yung mga ka-homeschooling ko, yung ha- asawa Japanese, yung asawa Canadian, asawa African, asawa Chinese, asawa Taiwanese. Although I love the diversity, I love the diversity, pero at some point, minsan nakaka-stress din yung iba-iba yung gusto. To the point na napapagod ka na more than nag enjoy ka dun sa play date. In fact, nag enjoy naman kami. But what I did was, and this was something that I parang na-realize ko as I was crying out to the Lord. Kasi ang maganda kasi when you're homeschooling, you have to realize that um, you're not enough. Na parang kahit anong gawin mo, kahit gaano yung pera mo, yung knowledge mo, yung experience mo, you'll never be enough. And if you have that sense in your heart na you'll never be enough, you'll always run to God, even for the smallest things. Alam mo yun, parang kahit sa play date, yung iniiyak ko yan kay Lord, na parang God, na parang how are we going to flourish na walang kaibigan yung anak ko. Parang habang sinasabi ko pa lang, yung tumutulo na yung luha ko, Novi, parang walang kaibigan ng anak ko. And to give you a context, Novi, dito sa Japan, meron silang tinatawag na Tomo Mama or Mama Tomo. para Tomo Tomo is Tomodachi. Mama. Ang mama is mom. So kapag halimbawa nag-school yung mga bata, okay, preschool, um, nursery, ganyan, preschool, kinder, ganyan, kung sino yung magkakasundong bata, yung mga nanay nun, forced sila. And I'm saying forced. Wow. Na sila yung magkakaibigan. Wow. So, tapos kapag mo, nanganak ka sa isang hospital, nanganak sa isang hospital, sabay-sabay kayo nanganak. Kasi pag nanganak ka dito sa Japan, sabay-sabay kayo kakain ng lunch, ng dinner, para yung mga mommies na sabay-sabay nanganak, meron kayong community agad. So yun yung mga magkakaibigan all the years nang lumalaki yung mga bata. So kapag wala kang school, napaka-isolated ko. Di ba parang, parang no, we, okay, wala akong tomo mama, wala akong mama tomo, ano bang tawag doon? Nakalimutan <laughs> 
Kasi nga, ayoko maalala. Kasi nga, yung mga magkakaibigan, ang Japanese kasi they're very um, groupish. Ibig sabihin, kung, kung ano yung group na komportable sila, doon sila nagka-thrive, doon sila nagpa-flourish. Okay? Since wala ako noon, wala akong tribe, wala akong, walang barkada yung anak ko on a regular basis, wala akong ka- Ka, ka field trip on a regular basis. Okay, so this is what the Lord actually revealed to me. And I think, I hope na ma-encourage kahit isa lang sa mga viewers mo. Um, when you are homeschooling, God can provide even friendships. Kasi it can be very, very sad. It can be very lonely. Most especially when you're working from home. Um, number one, I have all the elements. I have a single child. Okay, although medyo uso naman ang single child sa Japan, so hindi naman ako out of place, okay? Pero pag single child, wala siyang kalaro, right? So wala siyang kalaro sa bahay, uh, maliban ako or sa kido or sarili niya, right? Pangalawa, wala akong community because ang community ng mga Japanese is yung community nila sa school. Nag Umiikot ang buhay nila sa anong nangyayari sa school. Students go to school even on a Saturday and a Sunday novi. Naka-uniform. Wow. Saturday, Sunday. Kaya ngayon na may COVID-19, nagbe-break down. Talagang na, nanganga pa ang, job, ang, ang Japan because sanay sila na lahat ng bata nasa school so parents can do their thing. The parents can work, the moms can clean, can do the laundry para buo yung, buo yung household mo. Maayos yung household mo. Ngayon, nahihirapan sila because the kids are in, at home. Nahihirapan lahat. So, ang nangyayari was, in my case, Parang naging, naging answer ni God sa akin is, I will provide friendships for you and your daughter. Just wait. Parang ganun yung parang revelation niya sa akin. And one of the things that I have learned is this. I can actually learn even, I can get support and I can find community even from non-homeschooling family. Actually, God has provided me with moms who na ang mga anak nila pumupunta sa regular school. And they support me in the way I raise Adana. Sila yung parang community ko. I have afternoon tea with them. I have lunch with them. Um, I have I have friends na mas bata sa akin. I have good friends na writer. Well awarded yung mga films niya. Hi, Merlin. Well awarded yung mga films niya, not just in the Philippines, but also abroad. Nagsusulat siya ng mga, ng mga films, ng mga stories for theater, for movies. And she plays with my daughter. So kasama ko siya na nagzuzu. Um, alam mo yung parang parang nag-provide si God ng a certain kind of community para hindi kami malungkot. Um, because when you're working from home, ano kayo, hindi ka makakasabay, you cannot compare yourself dun sa mga families na nag-go homeschool and walang trabaho yung mom. And you know, I'm not saying na mas madali yung buhay nila. In fact, some of them may multiple children and that's hard. Um, ang sinasabi ko lang, if I'm working, I have work, and I need to homeschool, and I need to, to run some errands, and I need to do the dishes, I need to buy food for the house, I need to clean, I need to do a lot of things. But of course, with the help of my husband, hindi ako pwedeng makasabay dun sa play date ng mga families na walang trabaho yung mom. It can be very, very isolating in that sense. But God has provided me with people na, like, Kay, si Kay is... Um, uh, no, para working in an international school, she would help me. She would look at the books na ginag, uh, ginagamit ni Adana, magbibigay siya sa akin ng mga tips, kung paano mas magiging articulate si Adana in this way, kung paano mas magiging um, uh, malak, um, magaling siya in a certain um, subject. So these people are not homeschooling families. But God used these families to bless us and hopefully, nakakadagdag din kami ng value sa kanila. So, it's a win-win situation. So, wala ako, wala ako novi na kahang out na homeschooling families masyado. But I have families who support me. And to add lang siguro, ang dami na kong sinabi, but I also, I also try to join the community. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko pwedeng i-homeschool si Adana in isolation na. Kasi I'm raising a third culture kid. Diba alam natin, pag third culture kid, Yung culture ni Adana, hindi yun yung culture namin, either one of us. Yeah, yeah. So parang, paano ko siya papalakihan as a Filipino? And at the same time, naka-inverse siya dun sa community ng Japan. So ini-enroll ko siya sa mga ballet or sa sa mga 
um, swimming school, kung saan nakakakita talaga siya ng ibang mga families who go to regular schools. Ganun yung setup namin. Ang galing, ang galing. Natutuwa ako doon, ano, kasi because when God um, introduced to you homeschooling, okay, and specifically the time that you gave birth to Adana, you were able to trust the process that God has given you. So even though the norm would be always say na, okay, if you're homeschooling ka, go with the homeschooling community. But I love what you said. God will always provide a community for you. It's not about being homeschooling per se, but because God loves our kids, God, God loves each and every one of us, God will provide something for you that it will be for His purposes and for His glory. I like that what you shared. Thank you. Thank you, Abic, for that. Pero I just want you to know, no, kasi because of most of the audience here, and I, and I think I told you about this like a brief a while ago, no, because most of the families here are um, accidental homeschooler in such a way, and most of the viewers here, and there is one question here, I'm just gonna focus on here, no? Sabi niya, paano naman yung mga low income? How can you, how can they homeschool their loit, ha? Hindi ko na makita yun, ano, Hazel, can you help me find? Ang dami na kasi nag-comment doon sa ilalim, but... <laughs> May sasabihin uh, <sasabihan. laughs> Oh, ayan, how about low income families na di pa po kaya mag-purchase ng living books? Any advice, Jacqueline? From Jacqueline, I, I'm just gonna ano, follow this up, no? Kasi because, like, yung mga nasa inbox messages ko, Avic, no? Um, some are full-time uh, uh, working parents, both of them, and some are not naman. But, but because of this, they don't even know kung magkakaroon sila ng trabaho after this. And that's really the, I, I think, I cannot say the new normal, but it's the new reality that we have to take on. So, how do you think, in a practical way, is your advice of what they can do at home? But they really like to do homeschooling and okay. to start with. They don't know, we know. Um, just to backtrack a bit, tapos nasagutin ko yan. Sure. When I when we decided, kasi akala ng iba, ay, kaya mo yung mag-homeschool, Abby, kasi well-provided ka You don't worry about money, di ba? Parang akala ganun yung concept. But a lot of people don't know that we had to make a lot of difficult decisions. Okay, ganito yan. When you decide to homeschool or even to work and homeschool, you need to have a game plan. Pag sinabing game plan, kahit low income ka or high income ka, you need to have a game plan. And when I say game plan, hindi siya game plan in terms of anong curriculum yung gagamitin ko, saan ako bibili ng books, or paano ko pagsasabayin yung work and homeschooling. This was our game plan. Okay, when we decided to homeschool, we decided to live below our means. Okay? Because hindi ka pa pwedeng mag-homeschool and work from home at the same time na hindi mo kinokontent or hindi mo, hindi mo binabago certain aspects of your lifestyle that will make it impossible for you to homeschool your kid. So I don't know if you will believe this. We were living in a very comfortable apartment in Tokyo, mahal, malapit sa subway, across the park. Um, Near, very near a big hospital, naglakad lang ako kung saan ako nanganak, maraming parks, across a shopping mall, tapos malapit lang siya sa subway, then yung subway niya takes me all the way to the very posh Roppongi Hills and Tokyo Midtown. Kumbaga, ang sinasabi ko, very convenient. Yung parang kung mag-homeschool ako, ganito ko gusto mag-homeschool, na parang may park, may ganyan, may garden, may play area, may shopping mall, and all that, right? But when we decided to homeschool, I had to give up full-time job. And in Japan, everything is expensive. Parang for you to maintain a certain lifestyle in Japan, kailangan dalawa kayo nag-work. Most families here, nag-work yung asawa, nag-work until 12 midnight, 11 o'clock para to maintain a certain lifestyle. Or the wife, the, the wife will be working in a convenience store or will be doing some part-time work para ma-maintain yung certain lifestyle kasi ang mahal ng Japan. So when we decided to homeschool, that meant me leaving my full-time job. That meant wala kaming kikitain. Isa lang yung kita namin. And it happened during a crisis na naaapektuhan yung... Um, yung job security ng asawa ko. Okay, so pareho ng konteksto, right? So my husband works, he's in charge of parang international sales of a publishing company. And because of the earthquake and the tsunami, and it happened for many months, naapektuhan yung economy ng Japan, 
may may threat na baka mawalan siya ng trabaho, baka mabawasan yung oras niya sa work. And so, I was really in a place where um, baka hindi kayanin, baka kailangan kong magtrabaho, talaga full-time job, right? So, we had to really decide to live below our means. Lumipat kami ng apartment, uh, mas maliit na apartment, mas lumang apartment. We we moved outside of Tokyo. We lived, we started living very close to where my husband was working. Uh, he's still working in the same place right now. And then, nagpalit kami ng phones. Would you believe that? Dito sa Japan, everybody's using iPhones. Tapos every two years, palit ng palit. So we decided to settle with a very, very, very cheap Android phone. Okay? So ibig sabihin, what I'm saying is this. You have a game plan. And yung game plan na yon is to really look at the other aspects of your life and check kung ano yung pwede mong i-adjust to make way for the things that are important for you. I don't know if you would believe me, Nov, wala kaming TV. We never had a TV. Um, Usong-uso na dito yung mga smart TV. Nag- nakailang palit na ng TV sa Japan, we never bought TV. Um, uh, nagpalit kami ng phone, we, we decided not to go on vacations. Marami kaming tinanggal. For instance, my husband would go on business trips, di ba? Mag-Europe siya, mag-America siya. In fact, pwede naman niya kaming isama. Pero pag sinami na kami ni Adana, kami yung magbabay ng, ng airfare, ng hotel, we decided as a family, okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna run after vacations. Uh, vacations are great. Pero dinicide namin as a family that even if my daughter does not see the world just yet, she will be fine. Because I want to be able to settle into a lifestyle. Kagaya ng sinasabi ni Chinky. That's why I always listen to Chinky. And I encourage all of you to also listen to Chinky. I'm lagi niyang paulit-ulit ang sinasabi, to live below your means. So ito yung kakayanan namin. Binaba pa namin siya. Tapos even yung mga pwede naman naming ma-afford, hindi namin siya in-afford because we try, we try to focus on the more important things so that I can say no to some projects and I can say, say yes to homeschooling my daughter in a way that I want. Now, for the question na ni Jacqueline, that's a very good question. Um, maraming source, resources ngayon on the internet. Mara, pwede kang mag-photocopy. And I tell you, pwede kang pumunta ng library, pwede kang mag-hune, mga, mga hand-down books. I, you know, I ask my friends, yung mga Japanese friends namin dito, Baka may mga books ng mga anak mo na ginamit before, lalo yung mga storytelling lang naman. May mga sulat sa sulat pa, you would you believe, no, Vian? I have a friend in Singapore. Pinapadala niya ako ng books sa, kay Adana. May mga sulat pa ng mga, may mga sulat. Hindi ako nahihiya. You know why? Because in my mind, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And si Jacqueline, na gusto mong, kung gusto mong mag-homeschool, revisit kung ano yung mga expenses mo. Have a game plan. Tapos, Settle for what's available and your child will be okay. Thank you. Alam mo, <laughs> tututuwa ako sa'yo kasi lahat pag may question ako, like may backup story. Story, ah. <laughs> Lord, galing, galing. I like that. It's sobrang ganda. <laughs> Sobra ako nag-enjoy sa interview mo. So, ako tuwa lang kasi we're the same sa lahat ng mga decision make press that they do it. Especially, alam mo, tinatanong, Hano, Uvi, pumibili ka ng used books? Yeah, I do. And sometimes I always think that and I buy it from a parent to use it. Kasi nakakatulong din ako sa kanya eh. Kumbaga, uh, talagang binubura kayo. Meron kaming burag brigade dito sa bahay na talagang binubura isa-isa yun bago gamitin ng, ng anak ko. Oh, Siyempre, tatlo yung anak ko eh. So, uh, gagamitin nung isa. Pag nagamit nyo yung may gagamitin isa. Pero, hindi nila alam ng panganan na binibili ko rin sa isang parent na veteran na nauna sa akin. So, something like that. So, learn how to recycle. Learn how to recycle. And not only that, madami na ngayon na mga free na PDFs na makikita mo, lalo na ngayon sa crisis na to. Ang daming lumabas na mga free stuff that you can download from the internet. Okay. Um, and one way or another, kasi nga, ngayon di sila nakakalabas, Abic, eh. Parang yun yung parang challenge in such a way na, yun nga, pinagpe-pray natin ngayon. I think, I think I was able to send a while ago in my page and in my Viber page na meron yung DepEd na pinamimigay na libre for English lang, grade 1 to grade 6. And I'm sure they're gonna make more materials na libre 
sa Filipino, sa Araling Panlipunan, at meron po rin silang binibigay uh, format. So, intayin po natin yan na maging available soon. Uh, I'm not sure if I was, I was able to post that here in my main page, but if you uh, follow or uh, in my Viber page, lahat po na mga uh, usually nagagather ko na information na bago, doon ko po binibigay. So, don't worry kasi hindi po kayo alone. Kung sino ang Jacqueline nyo, you're not alone. That's why one of the things na I really like from Avic is she never, ano eh, she never say na, eto kaya ko to. She asked for help. I still remember the time when she was still asking and then she asked for my help. And that's what I like from her. She always willing to learn and ask for her. Pag hindi niya na kaya, magtatanong siya. And that's really important. Now, alam ko madami ka na nasabi, no? Yeah. DepEd Commons, they give free B B B D PDFs. I think it's not only DepEd Commons. May sinasabi dito, eh, I'm not sure kung si May nandito, siguro one or last two questions na lang. Ah, ito. In, I'm encouraged on how you commune to God even on small things. How do you impart that kind of relationship to your daughter? Yeah, mas maganda, maganda yan. Okay, I think um, I, I always model authenticity. Um, Ibig sabihin no, no, ano, I always homeschool from a place of what's real. Um, I, my daughter knows when I, I make mistakes and I have to tell her, you know, this is wrong. So many times I found myself on the floor, you know, with her, habang naglalaro siya, and I say, I would say sorry because what I did was not very godly. So, um, kasi iba yung, iba yung binabasahan mo siya ng libro. Pag magkatabi kayo, nagbabasa kayo ng Bible together, we do that. Um, iba rin yung parang nakikita niya sa'yo that it's alright to to ask for forgiveness. It's alright to, halimbawa, no, we, for example, hindi kami na-invite to a certain activity. Diba? Doon pumapasok yung impartation. Kasi tinitignan ng anak ko how I would react to rejection. And Nakita niya na even if I was rejected and deeply hurt, I would not say anything bad about the person. Kahit kami ni Pido, we have agreed na when there was a time talaga umaten, may pinuntahan kami sa lugar, nakita niya talaga na-reject kami ni Pido head on. Tapos biglang nasa train kami, umiiyak yung anak ko. Parang kahit wala itong naiintindihan. I think she was four or three years old. Wala siya naiintindihan sa sitwasyon, naglalaro lang siya, kasi wala naman kami nani, hindi naman siya pwedeng iwan sa kung saan, di ba? Pero pag uwi namin sa train, ang pag-usap namin ng asawa ko, we, we have to impart na even if we get rejected or hindi tayo mahihintay sa isang activity, we will still um, respond in a godly way. And hindi palaging ganun, na Minsan nagre-respond ka in an ungodly way. Minsan may meltdown ka. Minsan, impatient ka, di ba? So, ang impartation ko kay Adana is really to tell her, you know what I did, what Adana did was wrong. Sabi niya, tapos I try to process it with her and I tell her, you know why it's wrong? Not because I think it's wrong. Because God was not pleased. Because this is what the Bible says. So, parang, yun sa tingin ko, yung beauty ng homeschooling. Parang, imagine this, no, you know, they will only be a child once. Parang ako, in my mind, lagi ko, every year, every moment. Kasi nga, na-earthquake ako nung pinanganak ko siya. Parang akala ko talaga, mamamatay na ako. Dahil yung, yung building ko was really moving around for hours and pido, tumawag, nawala. So, parang akala ko, it was the end for all of us. And because of that, sabi ko, imagine having a spot under the sun where you can really see the emotions of your child. And not only that, you can catch kapag meron siyang nararamdaman na rejection, na because I'm present, kahit pa sabihin mo nasa meeting ako or nag-work ako on a paper, nakikita ko yung anak ko, may pinagdadaan ng rejection. Ano ba yung rejection ng mga bata? Maliliit lang. Pero sa kanila, big deal yun eh. Big deal oh, yun. Yeah. So the ability for me to, 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 you know, stop whatever I was, uh, whatever I'm doing and then to spend 10 minutes to really touch the heart of my kid, I think that will go a long way. More than more than any curriculum or fancy Bibles or fancy fancy devotional books, all these would help. Pero you being present would really make an impact on them. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So parenting talaga is mostly caught. Eh. 
yes. most likot. And nakakatuwa lang din, no? Avic, no? Akala mo kasi parang ang tingin laging gano'n. Pero alam mo, natututo ako sa mga anak ko. I think they're one of my main sounding board in my life. Now you think you are teaching this, teaching that, but they're the ones who's making the realizations more, you know, our experience in homeschooling more fruitful than ever because we learn from them and they're the ones who are teaching us actually on that end with this, with this journey. Nakakatawa. Well, anyway, oh, ang dami, oh. Ang daming comments, Abig. Siguro later you have to read all these comments. Ang dami nila natutunan. Very talagang, wow, a very mouthful conversation with you. And our prayers were really answered. Kanina ka, kinakabahang ka. Pero wow, you're so natural. Ang dami mong inputs. Ang dami mo ring um, practical and talagang words of wisdom to these mga nanays and, you know, even the dads and even the kids who are listening right now. Thank you so much. Pero to wrap this off, alam kong naku, more than one hour na pala tayo, no? Siguro last words to our audience regarding all of this. Okay. Siguro, if there is something that I want you to parang remember, especially for the new homeschoolers or yung mga in the middle of a crisis na marami kayong worries and and nag-worry kayo sa future ng anak nyo, sa future ng family nyo, um, do not try to juggle homeschooling and work or even homeschooling per se or even parenting per se um, from a place of wasteland of fear and shame. Pag sinabi kong wasteland, yung parang from a place of lack. Remember when, when many people, when they started homeschooling, they didn't know how they will be provided for. When you start from a place of fear, dun papasok yung insecurity, overwhelm ka, and you will be magkakaroon ng burnout. So um, you will be comparing yourself constantly to other people who are doing it so well. And you know what? Other people will be better than your kids. Other kids will be better than your kids. Other people will achieve more than your kids. And that's okay. Because ang gusto mong mangyari is for you to be able to facilitate or to lead your child to the very direction na meron yung Meron si God for, for your child, most especially if faith-based yung reason ng homeschooling mo. And definitely never ever homeschool. Whether, you know, don't work and homeschool from a place of shame. Pag sinabi kong place of shame, kasi meron tayo lumalaki, di ba? Parang yung iba sa atin mga homeschoolers, parang ako, lumaki ako na walang magulang or lumaki ako na salat sa buhay, kaya dapat magaling ka dito. Dapat magaling ka dito or lumaki ako na ganito yung magulang ko, lumaki ako na ganito yung parents ko, dapat ganito ka. So we pass it on, we pass on unnecessary burdens to our children, unnecessary fear, because there's a certain shame in our hearts na hindi ko nagawa to, dapat magawa mo. Or napabayaan ko to, dapat gawin mo. So parang you always have to, you have to strive or you have to come to a point where you have peace, and you are homeschooling from a place of abundance. Kahit walang laman yung fridge mo, kahit kahit walang books yung anak mo, kailangan in the in the deepest part of your heart you're gonna you're gonna homeschool from a place of abundance. Kasi nanay ke, tatay ke, you know your daughter, your children much more than anybody, much more than the best educator in the world. So, kailangan i-trust mo yun. And also, make peace with the fact, I think this is something that I had to learn the hard way. Make peace with the fact that your children will miss out on some things. Pag the earlier you accept that your child will not have all the travels or all the vacations na pwede makuha ng ibang family or uh, makaka-attend ng lahat ng field trips na pinupuntahan ng mga nag-regular school or yung nakaka-afford you will begin to have the joy and the peace and you will begin to see the little joys of homeschooling. Tapos, magugulat ka kasi yun pala yung mas importante dun sa anak mo. In the long run, uh, at the end of the day, your child will begin to say, the best part of my childhood or the best part of my growing up was the time I spent with my mom and dad. I think being fully present um, in the lives of your children even while you're working. So I have to accept no these certain projects. Um, I have to say no to certain projects because I always press the decision against 
against my priorities? Will this take away valuable time with my daughter? So, binaba ko yung lifestyle ko para makapag-say no ako sa mga projects para konti lang yung gastos mo. And at the same time, I can spend more time with my kids. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, my dear. Pero naisip ko, ah, pero hindi na makita na ano dahil live tayo. But I think you need to make a page about the OFW homeschooling. Ah! Oo, oh, inaatasang kita. <laughs> kailangan mong gawin na kailangan i-champion yan and you need to train them to think like this. And uh, one way or another, yun naman talaga eh. Siyempre, with all the unknowns that we, we, we've been facing, your experience and your testimony is really, really a blessing. Not only to me, but to all the people who's gonna listen to this the next day and the next week. So, magre-re, ano yan? Ano mo? Yung, I believe, no, ang dami mong mga points na sobrang gaganda eh, na makakatulong talaga sila. Especially, living, yung kung nakuwento mo yung part na na you were rejected with Adana. Grabe yun, ha? That's hard. It's hard to um, live in a foreign country and then uh, you will experience that and your child will be able to see how you respond on that thing. And natutuwa rin ako na sinabi mo na it's not always like that that you will respond well. Talaga minsan magagalit ka. But that's the truth eh. That's the truth. Thank you so much for sharing your life. Thank you so much for sharing your heart. Pido, maraming salamat. Naku, inilalaunch ko ng asawa mo. Sabi ko gumawa na siya. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Sige, I will see you later, my dear Abby. Thank okay. you. Okay, just wrap it up. Okay. Okay, grabe, grabe, no? Grabe. Sa dami nating natutunan. So, dear parents, no? Always remember lang this. You've got this and you are never alone. God called you to it, to do homeschooling, and He will see you through it. Hi. He will see you through it. When I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, review all that Abik said, all through his journey, God was able to see her through it. And definitely with our own homeschooling, God will be able to see us through. So inhale, exhale. Okay. Let's fully trust uh, God with our homeschooling experience. Okay. So maraming pong salamat sa lahat na nakinig. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nanood. Okay. Some of the announcement I'm going to tell you. Okay, please. If you think uh, iHomeschool is uh, beneficial to your homeschool journey, please follow us in our Facebook account, Instagram account, and YouTube account. And if you are comfortable with Viber, please do follow us there because minsan hindi ko na napopost sa FB, so nilalagay ko na lahat ng mga sinashare ko dyan sa Viber. And then you can also input there lahat ng share nyo. And if you think you want to further more about homeschooling by the heart, you can buy my book at 750 hardbound po yan. We deliver ngayon locally lang sa probinsya, hindi pa kaya eh. So, and you can also get this in digital form. Uh, 500 po ito. And then, pag nakuha nyo either, if you choose hardbound or digital, you have a free organizer, whether it's student and teacher organizer para po makatulong sa inyo. Okay. Okay. And great news, dahil po sa mga ideas nyo, this coming May 22, kung si Abig galing Japan, my dear friend, na talagang yung asawa nito ay best friend ng asawa ko, na si Chinky Tan, I invited my dear friend uh, to talk about classical conversations. Kung nung isang araw, eh, tina, uh, we talk about Charlotte Mason, this coming uh, May 22 po, this coming Friday, uh, my guest is Heidi Tenafrancia D. She's a homeschooler from Canada. Okay. And our topic is Discovering Classical Conversations. So if you want to learn more about methods, uh, Heidi will be able to teach us as well about this. Okay. I'm going to tell you more details about this. This is this coming Friday po, 8 p.m. din po. Okay. Uh, where can we buy your book? Or oh, you go to, to ihomeschool.ph uh, and you can also go to Lazada, Shopee, and... Um, I think CSM Publishing and also the learningbasket.com. Okay. Okay, marami pong salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Again, lagi lang po nating tatandaan, tatandaan in homeschooling. Okay. Relationship is more important than academics. 
Ako po si Nobi Antan, ang inyong homeschool coach, and I homeschool. Bye! Bye, everyone!